Now let's look at the history of the AWS cloud. So it was launched in 2002 internally at amazon.com because they realized that the IT department could be externalized. So their Amazon infrastructure was one of their core strengths and they said, you know what, maybe we can do IT for someone else, for other people. So they launched their first offering publicly, which was SQS in 2004. In 2006, they expanded their offering and they relaunched with the availability of SQS, S3, and EC2. Don't worry, we'll see all these services in this course. Then they expanded and said, you know what, we don't have to be just in America, we could be in Europe. And then, fast forward to today, we have so many applications that used to run or are still running on AWS, such as Dropbox, Netflix, Airbnb, or even the NASA. Now, let's look at where AWS is today. If we look at the Gartner Magic Quadrant, which sort of ranks the cloud providers, as we can see, AWS is on the top right corner, which is a leader. It's able to execute really well, and it has a really great completeness of vision. It is followed closely by Microsoft and Google. But still, in 2019, AWS had $35 billion in annual revenue, which is huge, and accounted for 47% of the market in 2019, with Microsoft being second with 22%. So by learning AWS, you are learning a tool that is widely used. It is a pioneer and leader of the AWS cloud market for the ninth consecutive year, and it has over 1 million active users. So what can you build on AWS? Well, pretty much everything. AWS will enable you to build sophisticated and scalable applications, and they are applicable to a diverse set of industries. Every company has a use case for the cloud. So Netflix, McDonald's, 21st Century Fox, Activision, they're all using the cloud. And use cases can include just transferring your enterprise IT, or using the cloud as a backup and storage, or doing some big data analytics. You can also host a website, or create a backend for your mobile and your social applications. Or you can have your entire gaming servers running on the cloud. The applications are endless. Now, AWS is global. And this is where we are going to learn a bit more specifics about how it works. So we have AWS regions, we have availability zones, data centers, edge locations, and points of presence. And all of these can be represented on the map right here. So let's go on this website to have a quick look at it. So this is a cool map because on this website, we can see how AWS is global. So if I click on it, I can you know, scroll the world and see what is happening. So we can see that AWS has multiple regions and they're in orange and they're all around the world. For example, Paris, in Spain, in Ohio, in Sao Paulo, Cape Town, Mumbai, and everywhere else. So AWS truly is a global service. On top of it, each region are going to be connected through the network. So these are the network reconnecting the regions, and this is a private network of AWS. And then within each region, for example, if I really scroll into the Cape Town region, we can see that we have blue dots, and each blue dots will be availability zones that we'll be describing in the next slide. So as we can see, what I want to get you out of this is that AWS truly is global and we can leverage the infrastructure of a cloud provider to make ourselves our application global. The first important concept in AWS are regions. So regions are all around the world and we saw it on the map from before. The regions have a name. It could be US East 1, EU West 3, and we can see the mapping of the name of the region to their code on the console that we'll see in a minute. Now, a region, what is in it truly? Well, it's going to be a cluster of data centers, so many different data centers located near, for example, Ohio or Singapore or Sydney or Tokyo. When we use AWS services, most services are going to be linked and scoped to a specific region. That means that if we use a service in one region and we try to use it in another region, it will be like a new time of using the service. Now, availability zones are what actually are going into the region. So each region will have many availability zones, usually three, the minimum is two, and the max is six, but really the usual is three. So let's take the Sydney region as an example. The Sydney region code is AP Southeast 2. So we're going to have, to have three availability zones in Sydney, AP Southeast 2A, AP Southeast 2B, and AP Southeast 2C. Now, each of these availability zones are going to be one or more discrete data centers that will have redundant power, networking, and connectivity. That means that in 
Southeast 2A, I can have two data centers, maybe as well two in 2B and two in 2C. But it could be one, it could be three, it could be four, we don't really know. It always doesn't tell us that. But what we know is that these availability zones are separate from each other so that they will be isolated from disasters. So if something happens to AP Southeast 2A, we know that it is designed not to cascade into AP Southeast 2B or AP Southeast 2C. So they're really isolated from disasters. And then these data centers, these availability zones, they are connected with a high bandwidth, ultra low latency networking, and therefore all together being linked together, it will form a region. Okay, next, the only thing we need to know about AWS for the global infrastructure is the points of presence or edge locations. We will see them in details in the global section of this course, but you should know that AWS has more than 200 points of presence in 84 cities across 42 countries, and this will be very helpful when we deliver content to the end users with the lowest latency possible. And this is what you see on this map. Now, again, I'm going quickly over this because we'll see this at the about the middle of this course. So now, how about we just play around and do a tour of the console? We'll see that AWS has global services, such as IAM, Route 53, CloudFront, and WAF, but we'll see that also most AWS services are going to be region scoped, such as Amazon EC2, Elastic Beanstalk, Lambda, and Recognition. Finally, to know if a service is available in your region, there is a region table you should check out right here.